the Associated Press Office in Madrid has reported news of an attempted military coup in Spain. Heavy fighting is said to have broken out in several cities. Seventy years ago, Spain was in the grip of civil war. Army units supported by the fascists were in revolt against the elected government. As the fighting spread, millions became homeless. Among them, many thousands of children. I couldn't see the Spanish tragedy purely as a political affair on which one could take a vote. I thought one side right and the other wrong, criminally wrong. But more than that, more than that, I was obsessed with the disintegration of humanity, of human nature that comes with civil war. The greatest atrocity of all. There were over a million refugees crammed into one small strip of coastline. And uh, hundreds of thousands of them were orphans, with no shelter, no bedding, very little food or water. They were either left on the streets or herded into vast camps. And the war was getting closer and closer. What we needed was a plan. We had the germ of an idea, that was all. I said, let's talk it over with the Duchess. Catherine Marjorie Stuart Murray, Duchess of Athol. They called her the Red Duchess, but actually she was a conservative. She was strongly opposed to Britain's policy in Spain, that is, of non-intervention. So in April 1937, she came over to see how things were on the ground. We told her we had a plan, at least the beginning of a plan. We wanted to establish colonies for the children, the refugee children, away from the big cities. Each child would have a sponsor, in England initially, but it wouldn't just be a case of providing money. There'd be a personal relationship between sponsor and child. She liked it. When she went back to London, she held a press conference to announce the formation of the Foster Parents Plan for Children in Spain. In the summer of 1937, things were going very badly for the government forces. There was a battle going on for Santander in the Basque Country, and there was a feeling that if the government lost Santander, They'd lost the war. We were in this village in the hills, north of the city. It was a collecting point for refugees, and many of them were children. There was one. He, he was about six. He had a sign round his neck. It said, This, this is, is Jose. Jose. I, am his father. I am his father. When Santander falls, I shall be shot. For my sake, please take care of my child. I told him about the kids in the colony. 200 of them. In five months, I saw them grow from tired, hungry urchins into... I was going to say normal, happy children, but how could that be? But at least they had a chance. They had a hope. And they'd started to forget the horrors of the war. They had a friend. That's what really excited them. The idea that they had a real friend in another country who cared about them. I think this was what really moved the people in America. The, the idea of a personal relationship. I think this was when it really began to take off. And then one day, the war caught up with us. Last Sunday after lunch, we were playing at the garden gate because the weather was very sunny, and then we heard the sound of planes. We looked up at the sky and saw lots of planes. When we ran into the field, they'd already started bombing, and the little children and the girls were crying. The master and other grown-ups shouted to us to run towards France. We ran hard because the planes were on top of us. We heard lots of bombs. The next day, the master called us and told us next time every big boy should take a little one. And they taught us to throw ourselves onto the ground. Later, Nick came and said we must dig trenches. The war was over. The fascists had won. We decided we had to get the children out. We led them across the border into France, all 300 of them. A long crocodile like a school outing, climbing over the Pyrenees. So that's how it began. They were the first. See the uncut 15-minute version of the plan below. <laughs>